Um, so uh, so the, the, the goal here really is to give something precise, some sort of precise description of some class of higher inductive types which someone could start trying to implement uh, in a, a, proof, a computer proof resistant. Uh, and I'm emphasizing sort of some class and, and trying and start because there are various things which are unsatisfactory about th what I'm about to present. And uh, I'm hoping, uh, we're hoping, Peter and I have been working on most, doing most of this together, we're hoping that uh, as people start, other people start thinking about this and uh, people start trying to implement this, that it will, uh, better ideas will emerge and, and better fixes will, will be thought of than what we've thought of so far. So it turns out to be surprisingly <laughs> difficult to write down precisely a general uh, notion of higher inductive type which actually makes sense and is consistent and, uh, and includes all the examples that you want. And so what I'm going to give is something which works uh, and, but it's not, it's not entirely satisfactory. And so, uh, but I, th I think it would be a good starting point and if, uh, assuming that it, that it all sort of is correct and if, if what I'm going to describe today were implemented literally just as I've said it, it would, it would be a big advantage for those of us actually trying to do type theory in, in Coq or wherever. Um, so my, my, that was, that was my, my big overall overriding caveat. Uh, and then my, uh, my next uh, slightly more specific caveat is that uh, I'm going to talk about inductive definitions and, and entirely in terms of uh, eliminators or, or uh, induction rules or recursion dependent elimination rules. Uh, now in, in, in Coq, uh, ordinary inductive types are that, that, that elimination rule is actually split into a match construction and a fixed construction. And we don't really know how to express uh, higher inductive types in that form. Uh, I don't think we've really thought about it very hard. Uh, so if, if in qu the course of implementing it, people want to think about how to rephrase it in that language, that would be wonderful. Um, but I'm just going to stick to the things that we do understand. Um, and one of the reasons that I understand them better, those, that expression better, is because it's more closely tied to the category theoretic semantics, which is the direction that I'm coming from understanding this stuff. So. Yes. Right. Right. Um, somewhere there's there's actually some theorem of this sort in some ordinary yeah. inductive types, right? So so the hope would be that for higher inductive types, whatever you come up with would be also intertranslatable. Yeah. Uh, and if so, you could per, you could implement it however you preferred to. Um, so. Let me start out by telling you how I think about inductive definitions uh, in general. So um, an I, what I think about an inductive definition is, as sort of from a semantic perspective, it, it has three parts. Uh, we, we define a notion of an algebra of some sort. And uh, so we're, we're sort of starting from this idea that inductive definitions are kind of like initial algebras for some endofunctor or, or something of that sort. Uh, but uh, in, when we sort of express this in type theory, right, so we have a notion of algebra, but instead of just saying we have an initial algebra, in order to, ex to express the initiality differently in terms of the dependent eliminator, we give two other pieces of data, uh, which I call, or p notions, which, I, which I'm going to call a dependent algebra and an algebra section. of a dependent algebra. Uh, so um, in general, so, so it, then, then what, what's going to happen, the, uh, the, inductive, the inductive thing, uh, the, the inductive type defined is in particular, it's an algebra, whatever that means. Uh, maybe I'll call it W, um, such that any uh, dependent algebra over W Uh, has an algebra section, a specified algebra section. Okay, so what that 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 says the uh, W being an algebra is what gives it the constructors, uh, the data going into uh, that we're specifying when we define the inductive type. Um, 
a dependent algebra over W is the hypotheses of the elimination rule, uh, the dependent elimination rule, and then saying that we have an algebra section is, uh, or sort of giving us the section is the, the elimination rule gives us a section of this dependent type, and then saying that it's an algebra section is the computation rule for that dependent elimination. Okay. Uh, so uh, categorically, I'm, I'm, I'm going to think of, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll draw pictures like X and Y being some vibration or display map over X, and then uh, a, uh, depend a, a section being a section of that map. Type theoretically, you would have uh, Y is going to be some type dependent on X, and then a section is going to be something like, uh, given some X in X, we have some dependently typed function. So uh, in, in, in a simple case of, uh, say, natural numbers, just to orient ourselves, uh, uh, to give an algebra in this case is to give uh, an element and uh, an endo function. So this is the sort of thing of which the natural numbers are supposed to be the initial one. Uh, and then to give a, uh, to give a dependent thing over a dependent algebra over x. So if I have a dependent type over, over such an x, and x is an algebra, then I have to give an element uh, over of the uh, sort of a, a zero element over the zero element of x. Uh, and I have to give uh, for, every, uh, for every x in x, uh, I have to give a function from uh, y of x to y of the successor of x. So this is the hypotheses of the eliminator. And then uh, a section is going to be uh, this, this sort of thing, f of x lives in y of x, uh, such that uh, f of zx is zy, and uh, f of sx of x is sy of f of x. Uh, and, and these. These these rules uh, in this case in this classical case they're they're definitional computation rules and within in, in the higher inductive case some of these we, we may allow to be propositional uh, computation rules. All right, so I, presumably I mean everybody is familiar with this, but I, I just want to set up the, the language and then to compare it to something like a circle. Uh, so an algebra uh, for the uh, for the circle is a type which comes equipped with a base point. Uh, and a loop. So the loop is an equality from the base point to the base point, and then a dependent algebra over this is a dependent type over x uh, together with some thing which lives over the base point, and uh, a, a loop, Ly, which is supposed to live over Lx. So in, in type theory, we, uh, we usually express this by saying that uh, it's what we get by it's, it's a path in the fiber over uh, Bx from what we get by transporting uh, By along Lx to uh, By itself. Yes? That's right. It's not. Um, so we're going to have to be more careful about what we're talking about. But so I'm, when I say I put algebra in quotes to mean I'm just I'm just defining what I'm going to call an algebra. Oh, so yeah. Uh, so the the uh, semantically uh, these things turn out to be sort of uh, uh, initial algebras for presented monads, uh, if that means anything to you. And so an, an an initial algebra for an ordinary endofunctor is the same as an initial algebra for a free monad generated by that endofunctor. Uh, and so now we're sort of allowing ourselves to present more complicated monads built out of free ones. But that is not supposed to make a whole lot of sense yet. So yeah, but hmm? coming from the higher inductiveness or just from the dependent? From the higher inductiveness. Okay. So if it were just like dependent algebras that weren't higher inductive? They would, so ordinary, uh, ordinary inductive types, including sort of natural numbers, natural numbers with what and, and inductive families with indices and all this stuff. Those are all initial algebras for endofunctors. Okay. But they're very special. They're, they're very special. Or 
yeah, the special uh, special endofunctors and their uh, um, their sort of homotopy initial in some precise sense too. Um, yes. Yeah. So so yeah. So, yeah. So you 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 could write by equals over lx by, uh, and uh, this this is this sort of, this sort of thing is, is is something you can define as a as an ordinary inductive family, right? You can say uh, uh, given a dependent type, uh, dependent equality over some equality in the base is defined inductively by a single reflexivity generator which lives over reflexivity in the base. Uh, so I, I mean I, I agree that this is sort of a nice way to think about it and, and we might want to consider using that more systematically. Uh, but up until now we've always been using this presentation. I'm not going to say a whole lot about the, the, the semantic side today. Uh, we can talk about it later, yeah. I, I, so I want to focus sort of on the s s syntax, how you, what you would actually implement. Do you have a question, Andre? No, OK. Yes, Peter. Um, you said that in the category for rational and rational, the situation all in terms of iteration. Uh, no, I don't think so. The, the, the dependent eliminator gives you general recursion. You don't need the parameters yeah. because you have uh, continuous over parameters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the parameters right there, the x1 and x2. Like that is the predecessor. It's like read x is nat, and x1 x is the predecessor. He means this one, right? Yeah. 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 So uh, this function can depend on x. And that's what makes iteration into recursion. Okay. So, um, right. So, so for S one, this was uh, this was the algebra, and this was the dependent algebra, and then the uh, an algebra section would be uh, this ordinary section, uh, so that uh, f of b x. Did I miss something? No, anyone else? When, when you want, I mean, f x, not b, b s one. No, 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 not nope. the, the line uh, okay, there. Don't you mean s one? Because you have z y. I'm I'm sorry, I'm lost. Uh huh. Yeah. So just exactly where you're pointing that is this. Yep. This term is S, S sub y, is it not? The S sub y? y? Oh, 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 yes, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Sub y, sub y. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, very good. Yeah. Uh, S, sub, S sub y, comma, little x, maybe. Thank you. All right, so the, an algebra section for the circle algebra will preserve the base point and, uh, and also uh, the loop. So this, is, this has got to be a map on paths, a dependent map on paths of whatever sort, however we define this, that takes a, a, a path or an equality in the base and gives us an equality in the, in the fiber or in the total phase living over that in whichever sense we mean it. Uh, and, uh, then we just, this, this is sort of an ordinary one. And uh, I think we, we talked a little bit about how you, since this is, this is an ordinary constructor not being a path constructor, it's sensible to ask this to be a definitional equality uh, as we did for ordinary inductive types. This one, it's less clear for various reasons that w whether we want it to be definitional. Um, so uh, I'm gonna leave it being propositional for now. Okay. One could also have the other one be propositional. Um, and that's what we get when we currently implement them using axioms that we write down in Koch. Um, I think 
allowing, getting, the, getting these equalities to be definitional is probably the biggest advantage we could expect to derive from having this actually implemented inside of COC rather than built out of axioms. Yeah. Like reduction It's a big deal. Yeah. yeah. What is the problem in having the definition in the public Well, um, so one, one problem is that uh, this de map on dependent map on paths is defined by uh, elimination on identity. And so it's not sort of specified and canonical in some way. There are various different definitions of it that you could give, which are all propositionally the same. But it seems odd to single out a particular one of them in order to, to make this a definitional equality. Uh, another reason is that when we, talk, when we build semantics of these things in uh, model categories or some push-all sets or whatever, in general, we only know how to get a, a propositional equality here. Um, I think even for the simple elimination. Uh, I mean, in some cases, you can futz around with it and try to make it definitional for a particular choice of map. But I th as far as I know, that particular choice of map that you get is not going to be any of the ones that you get by defining it in terms of idolim. It'll be something propositionally equivalent to those that sort of exists naturally in the model in its own right. But if you work consistently down, right. Then, it would be the then you, could, you could hope for it to be definitional. But we don't have a version of that that works at any higher dimensions. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think this is an open issue. Yeah, this is definitely an open issue. We would like to make this more definitional, but I don't think we really understand the right way to do that. Is there any advantage in that actually? Because on the last level, it doesn't really matter. It's, it's, not, a, it's not as big a win as this, yeah. but when you start uh, building new path constructors on top of old yeah. ones, you're, still, you're gonna have the same kinds of problems. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. Sure. Sure, but uh, we don't want to stop after only one path constructor. Um, Yeah. Like so that would be a way to get the meaning of the map, so it's not completely by the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of stuff that remains to be done <laughs> uh, and figured out. It's not going to compute in the same way that un ordinary univalence doesn't compute. I mean, it, making, making it actually evaluate to some value is the same sort of problem as with, with univalence that people are working on. No. We, yes. Yeah, so, yeah, there's, 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 there's stuff to do. <laughs> so, um, so uh, let, I, let me also, uh, I, I forgot to mention my, my third caveat, was, which, which was that I'm basically going to restrict to uh, higher inductive types with one-dimensional path constructors. So we're going we're gonna to put in points, and we're going to put in paths between points, but no path between paths. Um, did, I can't remember whether the introductory talk mentioned the reduction of higher paths to one-dimensional paths. Um, you might have mentioned it. So, so th there's a part of the, one of the one of the advantages of the of this flexibility is that uh, you you can sort of uh, change change the constructors sort of up to propositional equality, and you end up with the, with the with equivalent rules. So there's a th there's a cute little trick uh, which allows you to reduce a constructor which is trying to make a two-dimensional or three-dimensional, higher-dimensional path into a con con constructor making a one-dimensional path, which is 
sort of which has inputs coming from some higher dimensional sphere. So basically, like if you if I suppose I wanted to glue in uh, a two dimensional path between these two one dimensional paths, uh, the way I do it is I glue in a new point uh, in the middle of this disk, and then I uh, as sort of a hub, and then I put in spokes connecting everything on the outside to the hub. And each of these spokes is sort of a single one-dimensional path, but I just make them depend continuously on the circle, which parameterizes this constructor. So I don't want to get into the details of sort of how this works right now, but there's, there's a blog post about it, and you can um, read about it. So I, I want to restrict sort of consideration to the, the ones with one-dimensional constructors. Uh, we could think about, I think a lot of what I'm going to say should work sort of in more generality, but it takes more work to, to figure it out. And uh, doing this reduction manually is, is not so big a deal that we wouldn't, that would be impossible uh, whenever we wanted to use a higher constructor. Uh, so again, it's a, it's a sort of thing that would be a nice sort of simplification, but we can get away without it. So, uh, so what do we need? If, if we wanted to express this in generality, this, this sort of framework, we want some sort of uh, um, so, so from a semantic side, as I've been saying, it's, it's useful to think about this as algebras for some endofunctor. Uh, but if I'm expressing this in terms of algebras, dependent algebras, and algebra sections, in turn, instead of just initial algebras, uh, I need my endofunctor to have be more than just an endofunctor. It needs to have some information about these dependent things and sections. Uh, so if, if I have, I'm going to be a little bit imprecise about what this means, but if I have, because I'm going to talk about the, semantic, the, the syntax later, which generates these things. But uh, if I have an endofunctor, uh, which, which preserves uh, dependent types and sections. So if y is a dependent type on x, then I have sort of a dependent type f of y over f of x, and it preserves sort of sections of this sort. Then I can define a general notions of algebra, dependent algebra, and algebra section. So an algebra is a, is. Yeah, I mean, depending on what I'm saying, I'm, I'm being imprecise about this. I mean, maybe maybe f is acting on some uh, contextual category or. or uh, category comprehension category, in which case preserving the sections might be some additional data that you'd have to specify. But yeah. Uh, so given such an endofunctor, an algebra is just the ordinary sort of algebra for an endofunctor, and a dependent uh, algebra is categorically, I'll, I'll call it a commutative square like this. So I have my dependent type. And f preserves dependent types, and so I have f y dependent on f x, and then this algebra structure sort of has to lift to some algebra structure like that, uh, and then uh, uh, an algebra section is is likewise going to be something which uh, a section whose image over here being a section respects the algebra structures. Okay, uh, so so how do you get endofunctors like that? Uh, they come naturally from the kind of syntax that we put into defining inductive types. Uh, so uh, let me just do a simple example of sort of uh, how you get an endofunctor like that. So suppose I have some inductive type um, which has maybe one constructor which maybe takes uh, one sort of constant argument A and one um, argument of, of a bunch of things in B uh, parameterized by some other type, or sorry, in W parameterized by some other type B, and builds something in W. So the obvious functor that corresponds to this is, is defined by f of x equals a cross uh, x to the b. And so this constructor says, given something in A and a map function from B to, to, to W, I get something in W. So W is going to be an algebra for that endofunctor. But then I have to sort of extend that endofunctor to, to, to do this, to act on dependent types and sections in order to fit it sort of into this framework and, and, and tell me what the elimination rule and what the computation rule should be. Does that make sense? So uh, 
in this case, uh, what, it, what we do is if we have, uh, we have a dependent type y over x, then uh, f of y should be dependent on f of x. So I'll say uh, if I have maybe a uh, little a in a and g in uh, x to the b, I'll be very sloppy with my type theoretic notation here, then I should give you a type here. Uh, and uh, the type that I want to give you is, uh, say, for every b in b, I have something in y of g of b. And a has disappeared. Yeah, we didn't use a at all. So that looks a little bit weird, uh, if you, but, but if you think about sort of what that's saying, the, 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 if you think about f of y as a type, sort of, uh, or as a, sort of as an object of our category, then what we do is we, we sort of extend the whole context. So uh, that, that object f of y as a context contains f of x. So it has x a there and also x to the b and also this dependent uh, function thing. Uh, and then you can write down what it does on sections in an analogous way. And then if, you, if, you in, if we interpret what this, what this uh, dependent algebra structure means, then it comes out to say that we have for every, uh, for every a and g in here, uh, if we have uh, whatever the constructor is, um, so if I have a and a and g and x to the b and maybe g prime that lives in this product, then I'm supposed to give you something in y of the constructor applied to um, a and g. And so, so this, um, this, is, this is sort of saying, uh, yeah, for, for every, um, every family of things in y over, over this guy, um, then I'm getting something in y over this guy. So that's like the, um, this thing up here. Are we sort of happy with that, or should I try to be more explicit about what's going on here? Yeah, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Right, right. Then just bring it in and say that you just bring in the public of the initial and show that that's the mm -hmm. set up, you should reject the mixture in both sides. Right. And now this is a way of polycompacting the definition of the structure relatively to the notion of a productive type. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And it also captures the definition of uh, right. And now you're reviewing that for the case of a simple example. Mm -hmm. And that the semantic section doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. right? The other function is really dependent on the structure of the set. And then you're going to go mm -hmm. and those will not be algebras for another function. Right. Because they're not. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Thank you. That was a very good summary. No, 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 no. Yes. Uh, great. And uh, I'm just about ready to go on to the higher things. Uh, so let me just finish this up by saying uh, what would what would happen. I mean, so, so, so first of all, uh, this thing could be a lot more general. Right there, there's a there's a very general sort of uh, uh, definition of a constructor form where these could be dependent function spaces and there could be lots of these and so on. I'm not going to write out what that is. Uh, I wrote out something like that in the notes that I'm going to post if you want to have a look at it. And then there are other places where you can find it. Um, and all of that can be basically interpreted in, in an analogous way. Uh, if 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 W is an inductive family that depends on some indices, then uh, 
our functor f is not quite an endofunctor. Uh, it, uh, it, it's sort of like uh, if, if, if we have, uh, if w depends on some indices gamma, then uh, our, if our functor f sort of goes from uh, types over gamma to types over some other context delta, and then we have some substitution, some map from delta to gamma. And then uh, our, al our notion of algebra is some type in context gamma together with a map from fx to x, which lies over this map from delta to gamma. Uh, so, yeah, but, but then, and then you can write down everything just in, in this sort of more general way. So if you don't know what indices are or what I'm talking about, then you can completely ignore that. Uh, Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Is there, is that just specified by some rules that look at like the constructor form? Yeah, the, yeah, the, con the constructor form is, is, is syntactically characterized. Yeah. Uh, it's got some things like A, which are constant, yeah, and some right. things like W. And yeah. so basically, you say everything like this B to W, yeah. you make something like this. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a way abstractly of saying what that's doing? Or uh, you mean sort of in the category theory? You don't really understand entirely. Okay. Uh, right. I, mean, I don't know. Do you? Does anybody, Peter? Have you thought about that? Um, or anybody else? Um, yeah, I think it's just not tracking anything, but there's a constant. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, the, like it's, it's like generating the premises of this type of assumption. Right. Okay. Yes, exactly what, the, what is going on. I mean, right. this, is, this is in all sorts of papers or whatever, yeah, okay. whatever you can find this on inductive types. Yes. Okay. Which is what we're trying to do today, is syntax. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Right. So the, the, what, what's given in the constructor declaration is the A and the B. Mm -hmm. Right. And then all the course, the, the, the general, general version of that. Okay. So, uh, so the last thing I want to say about these, uh, the, the, the non-higher case is uh, if we had an inductive type that had more than one constructor, then we would get more than one functor f, uh, and then we would just say an endo. We, our, our an algebra con consists of a map from each f i of x to x, and the same in all these other cases. Right. Uh, you can sum them up semantic uh, semantically in a category which has sums. You can sum them up, but if you want to get say coproducts as an inductive type, uh, then you don't want to build coproducts into your definition. Uh, and if we, if we, if we now, if, again, if we, if we, if we express that again, uh, instead of instead of instead of doing it all at once by saying each constructor gives us a functor, uh, what we can do instead is we can say we can define it inductively. Uh, we can say a specification of an inductive type consists of either nothing at all or a specification of an inductive type together with a further constructor at the end. Right, and uh, and then what we and then we define these algebras and dependent algebras and sections and so on inductively by saying an algebra for such a thing is an algebra for the previous thing that I had together with a map from my new functor into that object. You might want to do such things, but it's difficult to program them. Uh, so, yes. Right, so that, that corresponds to the dependent algebra being a, depend, uh, a, a predicate. 
essentially. And then you recurse into it, and that proves something by induction. No. <laughs> uh, it's a it's 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 a kettle of worms for another day. Uh, I think uh, is what I want to say. <laughs> right. <coughs> okay. Uh, all right. Not bad. We have some time left to talk about higher things. So. For, for higher inductive types, what we're going to do is we're going to start from that inductive specification of an inductive type that, uh, that I mentioned before. And now at each stage, when we add a new constructor, it might be an ordinary constructor or it might be a path constructor, a, a, a constructor of an equality. And it's important that we do it inductively because now these, these equality constructors have to refer back to previous constructors in their, in their types. right? Uh, the, when I have an ordinary inductive type with a bunch of constructors, the constructors are basically independent of each other. Uh, but here, the loop has to go from the base point to the base point, which is my previous constructor. So the, the inductiveness is important. Right. So uh, a higher inductive type specification. on the order in which they come. That's right. Um, so uh, you, you might, in theory, have a path constructor coming before a point constructor and then a two-dimensional path before a one-dimensional path. Uh, it, the, 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 the presentation I'm going, in the presentation I'm going to give, uh, it's always going to be possible to reorder them so that all the point constructors come first and all the path constructors come later. Uh, it's, it's not generally possible to order the path constructors by dimension. You might have a two-dimensional path constructor coming before a one-dimensional path constructor that you can't do anything about. Um, but when we sort of reduce them all to one-dimensional constructors, then that sort of doesn't make much of a, a difference. Okay. So, so a higher inductive type specification uh, is, uh, is either uh, one nothing, in which case you get the empty type, uh, or uh, an HIT spec uh, plus an ordinary constructor of the sort that we were just talking about over there, or uh, Can the ordinary constructor refer now to the constructors already written in this case? No. This one cannot. This one cannot. Um, so you might imagine generalizing it to allow them to, but uh, for, for simplicity, let's say that they can't. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a point constructor, like the so base point. Can refer to other There's no way for it to. Um, so so the, it, it has a syntax which looks like this, and there's just some syntactic characterization of the things that you can write here, which is just completely syntactic. And the only thing we know about W when we're describing this is that it's a type, or it's a type dependent on it, whatever indices we gave it. Yeah? Right. So as I said, you could imagine allowing it to, but we don't really need it. Yeah, that it, that right. Right. Mm. Okay, so now we just need to say what is the extra data of a, of a path constructor. So. Uh, so we've got some inductive specification, uh, and yeah, what the goal is to fill this in. Uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll, maybe I'll say uh, a path constructor, and now our, our goal is to say what is this. Okay, so we're giving our, our, our specification. We've given a bunch, given a bunch of 
uh, constructors. And now our, our, our next constructor is going to be some path. And so it's going to have some, uh, it's going to be something like this. It's going to have, have some inputs, whatever those are. And then it's going to produce not an element of w, but an element of some path type in w. So remember, we're, we're, we're sticking ourselves to, we're sticking ourselves to one dimensional things. Okay? So, yes? Inductive types. Stopping. Right. Okay. Right. Exactly. That's the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Strictly positive. So st strict positivity is, is the syntactic restriction on, on, those, uh, on those things. What does the phrase we don't get w type mean? Uh, Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm calling. Uh, I'm calling my inductive types W, but uh, uh, a W type is a particular kind of inductive type that has one constructor, which is parameterized by, which is determined by a single dependent family. Uh, so, uh, if if I if I have a, if I have a single a dependent family like this, then an an induct a W type has a constructor uh, which looks like uh, for all a b of a no um, is that right something like that right so yeah so it's the dependent version of that basically uh, it's called, is it, is It's what, what's true is that it, every, every inductive type can be reduced to a combination of W types and natural numbers and coproducts. And, um, uh, it's true. I mean, it's, it's hard to find a proof written out carefully. In the homotopical frame, there's a lattice type exception. Okay. But there's no. Okay. All right. In the, in the like, extensional frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, we, and we don't currently know any similar reduction for higher inductive types. We don't know any. I mean, we know some reductions, right? We can reduce higher paths to one-dimensional paths in the way that I described. But, 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 I but the theorem was not organizable with the yes. index. Uh, yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah. So, so even you can you can write down an indexed yes. version of this, which is even more general. Right. So, so this is uh, this is what our, our path constructor is going to look like. It's going to have some inputs, and then it's going to be producing a path. Uh, and what we're for simplicity, what we're going to say is that this, these inputs have the same syntactic form as the classical case. So the 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 restrictions on whatever this a to the b to the w, the more general indexed version of that, whatever those are. They are exactly the same here. And the only change is that instead of producing an element of w, we produce a path. But, but didn't you say that the reduction of higher ones requires higher subject inputs? Um, so what we do need, we, we need to be able to refer to previous constructors, but only in the terms u and v, not in the well, input data. I mean, you might imagine allowing yourself to, yeah. but for simplicity, we're going to say, let's not. And I don't think we have any examples where you need to. Right, you can give it a, you can give it a two -step. Sorry, what? Oh, yeah, yes. OK, so, so that, that, that's a good point. There, there, so there is a generalization of this, which you might want. Uh, so you might want to be able to have a constructor which looks like, uh, say, for all x and y in W, uh, for all p and q from x to y, uh, we have a path from p to q. Right? So this is not of that form, right? Because um, we have this sort of equality thing. And so uh, we haven't really thought very much about, have we? Maybe you've thought more than I have about how to actually represent this. And, and what the what the rules would be for it, but we 
we can, up to propositionally, right, with the flexibility that we get from the propositional computation rules, this is equivalent to something of, a, of, of, of that form. So because w is the type that we're defining? The w is the type we're defining, so yeah. If we previously defined something, this would be allowed. That's right. Yeah, uh, can I finish what I'm saying over here? Yeah, so, um, so, so here, um, something like this, uh, what we, we can reduce that to, 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 to that sort of context by saying given, given P and Q, right, we can, if, we, if we define a separate inductive type to match, higher inductive type to match the paths that we're trying to find inside of W, and then we eliminate out of that to pick them by a map. So, so for instance here, what we would do is we would define essentially the circle a higher inductive type with two points and two paths of this sort, then given x, give it to give x and y and p and q is essentially to give a map from the circle into w. And so we can essentially replace this quantification with a quantification over maps from the circle into w, which is of that form, just for a particular type which we defined in some fancy way. And then saying that P and Q are equal is saying that this is contractible. And so I can put in a hub and, and spokes just like I did before to contract that. Also true, right? So, so you can, if you wanted to say something about P and Q more than that just they're equal to each other, uh, I have this constructor, which is a path in S1. And so I can apply my L to it uh, when I build this term. Right? So like L star of um, P hat or whatever is going to evaluate to P. So the restriction is that the argument to the constructor doesn't get to depend on the previously given stuff. Right. But, the, like but, the, but these, these, these terms do, yeah. right. Yeah. And so now the question, now, so now like that means the, the, the whole question is, what sort of things are u and v, and, and what, how do we get out the rules from, from giving u and v? Um, you, can, you can have indices. I'm sort of going to talk about the non-indexed case just to make it simpler. Uh, it just makes it, makes it more technical if you have indices. They're the things that come to. Or to, uh, to the left of the colon equals, but to the right of the colon. Right, if you. Okay, 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 that, that's, that's not relevant for me. Not a good use of time. What was that? That was what? Uh, okay. So no, I haven't said what U and V are yet. Yes? Well, if you say zero is connected to zero, then you're putting a loop at zero. A new one. Sorry? You're putting a new one. A new loop at zero. Because right? zero automatically comes with its reflexivity term. Okay. Uh, but, the new, but the increase has to be the Yeah. I mean, I mean, you might have, in, you, are you thinking of infinitely many constructors? One for each natural number? Or? Um, that, that would not fit, as I, this, as I've written it, you'd have to rewrite that in some other way. You can rewrite it by yeah. enhancing the W to the Yeah. Um, yeah. So you need a path that's enhancing the W to mm -hmm. the Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
Yeah, I mean, so, so uh, this is another direction that's worth thinking about is how much can you generalize this uh, and, and, and what sort of, what, how, how do you get corresponding roles? But for simplicity today, let's sort of pick it, fix it to be the ordinary sort. Okay, so, um, so now the, the sort of the naive thing that you might think to tick for u and v is uh, just say let, uh, let u and v be terms, uh, say, of type x in context of no. That is what I wrote, but that's not what I want here. Because <laughs> my, my terms u and v have type x in the context where x is a type variable. Uh, and I'm given the previous constructors referring to x rather than w. Uh, and furthermore, I'm given the inputs to this constructor. with x instead of w. Okay, make my thing grammatical. Um, well, you can make it anything you want. I want to emphasize that it's, a, that it's just a variable. It's not the inductive type being defined. It's, it's an arbitrary type with this structure. No, there might be other path constructors up here. You can refer to them. But only the ones above. But only the ones above. Right. So this is another thing that you might consider different ways to do it. Uh, but what, what, what I, the, way, the way that I'm, that I'm presenting it now, which makes it make sense sort of for this inductive thing, is that uh, what matters is the order of the constructors, that each constructor can refer to the previous ones, but not the ones that come after it. So you can imagine having two constructors which mutually refer to each other, but that would be an extra another problem to figure out what that means. Well, okay. So let me let me. Um, so is is x a type of the ones with the previous constructors? Um, or is, is x one of them? So so u and v are terms that involve a, a, have some variable, some type variable. Okay. I don't know anything about it except that it comes with the structure specified by the previous constructors. At least that. At least that structure. Okay. And it's a fresh type variable. It's a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're not assuming that anything is inductive? No, I'm not assuming that x is inductively generated by anything at all. But you could go sort of upward. You're assuming you have an inductive structure, then you know that it's inductive. You might. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Anything that's already been defined, you can use. So, so maybe I should say, in the ambient context, extended by. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, context extended by. The previous constructors and the inputs are given as variables in this context also? Yes. Or they're, they're variables. Variables. Ah. So then you choose the order of the terms. And there's nothing. Uh, so, so I mean, I'm not sure what the, what what questions are being asked here. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, does 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 everyone not understand what I'm? I've got a clue. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so so there are various changes that you might consider making. Um, and and I, and I should say so the, the what I'm eventually going to present does actually use this but it uses it in a slightly funny way. Uh, and so now I'm going to give you a really funny example, which is going to convince you that sort of, I hopefully going to convince you that this sort of the naive way of interpreting this doesn't work. Um, so 
Um, suppose, remember, so, so as, as, as Christina very rightly pointed out, I don't just mean only these things in the context. I have sort of all of my ambient context of whatever other things I've defined and whatever hypotheses I'm assuming. Um, so, and we want, definitely want to be able to do that. For instance, we want to be able to assume univalence in the context and these sorts of things. So um, my, funny, in my, or my funny example here, I'm going to suppose that I have some slightly funny thing in the context. Uh, Um, so this is the thing with the, with the, with the type of the uh, parametric identity function. Uh, so it might be the parametric identity function, but uh, uh, semantically it could be different than the parametric identity function. Right? If I were writing out a term then of this type, then parametricity would sort of probably make it the parametric identity function. But uh, there's no requirement semantically that this be natural. So it could, like, it could, it could swap the two points in bool, but fix every other type. Right? And it could do sort of really stupid things. Okay, so now uh, consider the following inductive definition. Uh, uh, I'm going to call it maybe, uh, I don't know what to call it. I mean, uh, when we interpret our type theory in some sort of semantics like simplicial sets, um, then there are things in the model which have this type. Uh, which 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 you might which are which are which are not represented by any ex any literal term of type theory. The board syntax there is really bad. Yeah, it's yeah. Very undesirable property. Well, depends what you want. I mean, <laughs> you might <laughs> depends what properties you desire, right? Right. <laughs> right. So the same type. Um, uh, okay. Let me, let me call this thing Q. Um, and I'm going to make it, it's going to be kind of like a circle, or actually I'll make it kind of like an interval. So uh, it has two base points, B1 and B2. Uh, and then it has a segment, sigma. Now in an ordinary interval, I would go from B1 to B2. But instead, I'm going to have sigma go from P of B1 to P of B2. OK. Yeah, P sub Q. Sorry. Type is the is an. Is. I want to put curly braces around my x colon type, <laughs> the implicit argument. Uh, all right. So uh, so now let's think about what the. Uh, no, it's perfectly fine. Uh, the, remember that the inputs are the the ordinary requirements here. The inputs are all nothing. There are no inputs at all. In all of these cases, this is, this is empty. Are you saying it's contravariant in the first type? No, I'm saying that we're asking Q as an argument for something, which, as far as I know, is not allowed. That one on the right hand side, that no, but it's not allowed in the one in the. In the, in the you say for the right hand side in U, but not the highest representation. What I proposed is that U and V are arbitrary terms in this context. It has right? to mix in that what zero there is bad. Right, so this, this, already this, found fault with it, so you have this, this is U yeah. and this is V. OK, I'm just saying it's, I don't think it's good because it's asking Q as an argument for something. OK. Um, we definitely want to do something. Let's take a slightly different argument. We might want to have path composition, let's say. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, um, so what, what's what's wacky about this? Um, so, what does it mean to have a dependent algebra over over Q? Um, or maybe I'll say X. So, X X is an algebra with this structure. Uh, so, it has B one and B two and sigma. And now, what does it mean to give dependent algebra structure to Y? So, we should have a, we should have a B one prime which lives in Y of B one. 
and we should have a B2 prime which lives in Y of B2. And now we should have some sort of path uh, which lies over sigma uh, somehow, right? But, but it, should be, uh, uh, it should be something over sigma, so it should be something whose whatever these things are, this thing is supposed to live in Y of P of B1, and this thing is supposed to live in Y of P of B2, but nothing, nothing even makes these types necessarily non-empty. Right, because we all, all we have is things that live over B, Y of B1 and B2, and there's no relationship in general between Y of B1 and, and Y of P of B1. So, so with, with a naive interpretation of this general term syntax, uh, there's no way to give a, dip, a, 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 a no way to type the eliminator that you would expect to have for this for this inductive type. Right, so we need to we need to fix it somehow. So one thing you might imagine trying to fix it by, yes. Is there two complexity separate types that fix the thing? Because in the ID you say that PMT cannot refresh the debugger. Cannot refer to what? Cannot refresh the debugger to the type in the next Okay, so, so, so I guess U is really P sub X of V1. Because U and V can refer to X, the variable. Yes, but then you have to take it and take it. Yeah, yeah, we do want to do take it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, yeah, so, so, sorry, sorry, I guess I skipped a step. So, so U and V include this variable X, but then when, we, when the idea would be when we interpret them as the constructors acting on our defined type, we substitute the type we're defining for the variable x, and that gives us that would be the idea that would the na naive idea that would give us the types of these constructors. Uh, okay, so um, so one thing you might what you might think about doing is try to restrict the syntax of u and v in order to get some class of terms that you know might wouldn't necessarily work. Um, I don't think we have we have any idea about how to do that. So how to how to exclude things like this while keeping things like path concatenation that, that we definitely want. And like potentially, I mean, path concatenation leads to trying to know actually what the, but we want to be able to do things like something like that. Right. So you don't want to say, but whenever it's done, it's done. Path concatenation has a type like, uh, But if you if you reduce this to a one-dimensional constructor with the hub and spoke, you're still going to have the concatenation in there involved in these terms. I mean, it, what, if by hypothesis you mean this part, then no, it won't be in there. And there's no argument. Yeah, there, there, there's no argument in going into this here. So we're, we're, what, we, what we would have to, what we do is we define, given P and Q, we define a particular map from the circle into the torus by eliminating on the universal property of the, of the circle. And that match, that elimination, is in, is part of the term u and v th that will go into the building these so these next the terms. Very good idea here then for triangle terms to be caught because the indices are not actually allowed to contain any actual type. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Is this correct? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. There are no indices here. Very different from what 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. So, so, th- right. So, 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 as I was saying, you might think about restricting the syntax of U and V, but we don't know any way to do that. So, uh, the best idea we have is to, uh, when when we when we given these terms, uh, when we interpret them as the constructors here, uh, rather than just naively substituting W for the variable X, we're going to interpret them as things of type. Uh, uh, th- things with the appropriate types in a slightly fancier way. Okay, uh, so given given U uh, like that, uh, like this this a term of type X in this context. Um, <coughs> I'm going to do what some I think somebody mentioned. Uh, maybe something like this. Uh, let Z uh, be the inductive type, uh, higher inductive type, perhaps, defined by. Uh, so, first of all, uh, Z is going to have all the previous constructors. So it's uh, it's like the it's 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 generated by all the constructors that came before the one we're defining, and uh, some further constructors, uh, which come from the inputs to this constructor here. So uh, I don't um, I, I I don't have my general syntax up here before. Uh, so the uh, yeah okay so. Uh, some more. So let me just give you an example of what I mean by this some more, uh, and then you should be able to guess what the, what the general case is once you've written down the general case. So if, if our constructor is has the, uh, has the form of the thing that I just erased, so if it's, uh, if it's a to the b to the w uh, to uh, u equals v, um, then then we have one more constructor which looks like that. So, so all the, uh, I don't know what to call these things, but all the uh, recursive. recursive calls that go into this bit here give us new constructors uh, of this inductive type Z. Yes. Uh, right. Right. So uh, so Z is, is defined in the context of, of variables in type A in, in general. Why, why do you make these constructors? Why are you restricting them to this function? Um, because we want to be able to eliminate out of Z uh, into W uh, based on specifying values for these constructors. Yeah, so, so Z is freely generated by the language in which U and V are written. Uh, so like, do Z have the okay. alim rule? Or? It's an inductive type. It has its alim rule.
right? No, no, that's fine. That, that's that's good. Uh, Okay, uh, I'm glad Peter was here because I didn't understand those questions. Um, okay, so uh, so given Z defined like this, uh, if I have some other if I have some other type X which uh, sort of has the data of this uh, this constructor, um, then what I can do is I can take my term U uh, involving a and uh, whatever this thing is, G, uh, and this gives me something of type Z. Right, so U with, with Z substituted for X. Maybe I should say U sub Z or something. Uh, because Z is a type which has all the previous constructors in it, and moreover, these, these inputs are being specified. In, in, as part of this uh, inductively generating on Z, okay. Now, uh, but now we also have uh, if uh, if also X um, is an algebra for the previous constructors, then. Uh, X has all of the data that we define Z freely with respect to. So uh, X comes with all the previous constructors because I've assumed them. And also in, my, in this context of, of, of A and H, I have, I have this other last constructor. So what I, I get, I, I can recursively eliminate out of Z um, to get uh, something that I might call rec of X comma uh, H. So this, this gives me a map from Z into x. Does that make sense? Uh, and so, so then I can apply this rec of x h to this term here, u z of a g, uh, and that gives me something of type x. And this is going to be my interpretation of u. Yes. Did I get something wrong? Uh, I maybe I'm wrong. Uh, U may involve all the inputs to the constructor. Yeah. One of them is a function from from B to X. Question is that B is supposed to be here. Okay, okay. Whatever, whatever you want to call it. I mean, in order to interpret U with Z being X, or with X being Z, I need all the previous constructors and I also need this function from B to Z. The reason you have to know there's a constructor is so you can eliminate out of Z and map into X. Mm-hmm. No. Because H has to do with X and G has to do with Z. G is one of the constructors of the inductive type Z. U is defined as U 
So maybe it would be clear if I said u of z and the previous constructors and a and g, because all, all this stuff is in the context of u. So I give it a type, I give it all the previous constructors for that type, and then I give it the inputs to this constructor. Yes. Okay. And so that's so all what I have to give you. Yeah. Right, uh, and so, so as, and as Peter pointed out, this A should really be in the context of Z as well, because this might depend on things in A. Right, so so now uh, we, we we define this term of type X in the context of A and H. So uh, if we put that all together, it gives us the ma the thing that we want: A mapping to uh, B to X mapping to X. So, so, so what, what we've done here, if we step back for a minute, is we, what, we, what we've done is we've said, given a ty any type X, which is an algebra for the previous constructors, we've built something of this type, right? Which was exactly what we did over here by st starting with U, given an X, which is an algebra for the previous constructors, we could just sort of naively interpret x as that type, and then sort of curry these over to the inputs and get something else uh, of this type. Uh, but here we've done it in a fancier way using this inductive thing. Uh, and now in this case, we know that because we've done it in this canonical way, that we're going to be able to lift it to the dependent algebras. Does that make any sense? Okay, so why have you repeated yourself from being the nasty thing to just something nasty? Um, right. So, What's going to happen in this case is the inductive thing that we're defining, uh, its constructors, so if we, if we, we're going to write this, um, and then when we actually build it, uh, the type that we get will have constructors B1 of Q and B2 of Q, but now this type sigma will be a path not from what we wrote here, literally interpreted uh, with X, B, and Q, but by eliminating out of this thing z. So, so sigma will be a path from something like um, rec of uh, q of uh, this of, of u interpreted at z. So this is going to be something like uh, p of v1 uh, and z. Right. Right. Uh, so that is going to equal rec of q of uh, the type argument. Yeah, so sorry, I'm eliminating out of q into z, or sorry, into z, out of z into q. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And now, now the, the the point is that this is not necessarily this, because P is not natural. Uh, but this is natural, and it does lift to dependent things. Uh, it's in type Q. Because Z is bool, and so it has a point V1. I apply P sub Z to it, and I get some other point of Z. And then I have this unique map from z into q, which uh, is determined by these two points. And whatever that, that point is in z, in bool, I send it to some point in q. Uh, I'm, B, B1 is the first point. B1 sub z is the first point of z. And, and B2z is the second point of z. So z is inductively defined by B1 and B2, by its own B1 and B2, which are different from q's. Right. The unmapped algorithm P doesn't put the, the point 
just used PM1 first, and now we're getting to any other instance of the ESRB activity by researching out of that. And that researching is something now that is natural in this C1, B2, C3 data. Right. So I'm fully aware that this is weird. Yeah, and so like, it, is it obvious that if you don't do anything weird in U and B, then you get what you would have gotten if you just did the naive substitution? Like if you don't like concoct in something where you like. Yeah. So um, so th th this is this is something that sort of uh, so so okay so so more generally, yeah. since since we're about out of time, let me finish up uh, by saying so so what what we, we we've got this we, you write something. And then the sort of the proposal at, at the moment is that uh, internally the system does some weird thing, uh, and it builds some other terms. And the ter the constructor that you wrote as this gets actually gives you a constructor of this this type, which is a different type, and that's kind of annoying. First of all, and uh, you know, you'd like it to be giving you the thing that you wanted. And if you wrote something stupid like this, then maybe you deserve what you get. But in in, in reality. Um, this isn't actually, I mean, the thing that you wrote is it actually does make sense. Right. So um, in, in all reasonable cases, uh, this thing is going to give you something propositionally equal to the thing that you wrote. Um, basically, because anything reasonable that you write down is going to be uh, natural propositionally, essentially. Uh, so uh, we haven't yet. Uh, come up with a nice syntactic characterization of what sorts of terms are natural in this way that would cover all the cases we care about. Uh, it, it seems like a tricky problem because it's, I mean, you, you can write down some classes of things, right? Like concatenation of paths is preserved propositionally. We know that. And all these sort of higher operations on paths. But in order to do the reduction from higher paths to one to one paths, you also want to involve eliminations out of other inductive types. Uh, and those uh, sort of th that's some sort of propositional eta rule for those dependent types that you're eliminating those inductive types you're eliminating out of. So, so it's kind of complicated. Um, now, on the other hand, in any particular case, it seems like it will be very easy to prove this such a propositional equality. Uh, yeah, basically, it's just going to be some sort of an unfolding of things. Maybe some it, you could basically probably make it into a, some fancy sort of auto rewrite. Basically, the things like map on a concatenation is a concatenation of maps, and these sorts of rewrite rules, in most cases, ought to sort of to prove this for you. So, um, so a simple thing to do would be to have the system do this, and then once you've written down the definition, manually prove an equality between the two sides, and then redefine the constructors that you wanted by concatenating the ones that the system gave you with the ones you wanted. Um, that's obviously not ideal, but it would be something. Um, sort of a next level up would be for the system, whenever you write something like this, for the system to stick you with a proof obligation to, to, to verify that the thing that you wrote is actually equal to the thing the system wanted to, be, to generate in order for this to be coherent. And then once you've satisfied that proof obligation, the, the constructor that it gives you would have the type that you wanted because it took the, the constructor that it generated automatically and automatically composed it with the with the, the proofs that you gave. And then you can imagine you, you might have to do something additional in order to, to get the dependent thing to work out as well. I, I've written a, we've written a little bit more about that in the notes that I'll post, but I don't want to get into describing what you would have to do to, to, to for the dependent version as well. Uh, and then finally, you could also imagine the system programming some sort of auto rewrite like that itself to automatically prove inequality in, in the cases where it can. That would, that would save you even more work. Uh, and the best thing to do, would, of course, would be to solve this problem so that you don't have to deal with this at all. And I would love to hear suggestions for that. Andre's been waiting so a long time. This is quite complicated. Yes. There might be a, uh, an exercise which could be proved quite useful already, which is not to try to define inductive types, but just try to define a new type where you are allowed to glue in some path so an existing type can synthesize with more paths. Would that simplify anything? Um, well, it depends on how restricted you, you would just say ask I can for. Define, I already uh -huh. have a type, so I'm going to uh -huh. have another type, which is like this one, but I'm sticking in some paths. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so 
I, th if it, I think that um, it's a quotient requirement. Or something like that. That is definitely something one can consider for a simpler special case, mm -hmm. but it also gives much, I think that gives much less generality to your work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it doesn't suffice to show it's a related function. Uh -huh. It's supposed to be related yeah. to yeah. You have been searching for great deal of generality in yeah. the features of general notion of injection higher than itself. Can you identify, or can someone here in an exercise identify, a, a class of higher injection plants, a simple higher injection? can be specified in a more, in a less elaborate way, which would be a special case of course. Mm -hmm. They don't require these complications. I probably there are various different such classes. But so I suppose it would be, it would be, yeah, I suppose one thing I've done is, it would be nice to have a description of a class of simple mm -hmm. higher injection plants that can be given mm -hmm. in a more direct way, and then could be implemented already as a kind of warm-up exercise. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, so you guys are already aware of such a simplified class. One simplification, another one which I didn't actually mention is that in, in a fair, surprisingly large number of cases, these things you get actually are definitionally equal. Um, like if in, in the case of the circle and, and, and things li and like that, it turns out to be basically whenever u and v are just basically literally some previous constructors or data that you've put in, then some whatever definitional computation rule z has will carry over to make that sort of a definitional equality. Uh, yeah. Can I just on the yes. Yes. Um, so two questions. I have a little formalization of one exponential and one dimensional doubling plate. Okay. So a soft additional version of those, and those are a simple class that have Very one simple. higher constructor and one simple form. One higher constructor. Right. Mm -hmm. But but I mean also your your formalization does use this whole machinery. Yeah, exactly. But they could be perhaps formulated in a way which doesn't require this. What's the example I'm showing you that doesn't? What what would an example to concretely do with first uh, by just removing it? That's I think that yes, belongs to the uh, now that I think about that. So the, the other point I just want to make as a case of you know where we stand at the end of this is that this is is something that is a complete proposal that is made of, we believe, yeah. uh, fairly optimistically, we have, we have with a lot of this, but have a consistent amount of this. Yeah. And on the other hand, we also think it gives a wide enough generality to give at least all the examples of simple time injection types we looked at so far. Yeah. And so this is a kind of first proposal of something that seems reasonable to break out. And I, I entirely agree that looking for simpler versions is a good thing to do too, as well as looking for better ways to do the general version. Or some, some proposal for the general case, yeah.